I'm going to be talking about artist workflows today, which is quite exciting. It's weird you all sat in table form. I feel like a lecturer. I feel like it needs to be a bit loosey-goosey. As I was introduced, my name's Liz. I'm a technical evangelist at Unity, based in Brighton. Um, and I have the cool job of coming to events like this and saying, look at these cool features that you guys and girls can use. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So thanks for joining me this morning. Um, here's my email and feel free to reach out to me on social media if you don't catch me today to follow up with any questions or anything like that. I don't usually sound this raspy either. I think I'm getting like a summer cold, which is like the worst kind of cold to get. So today's agenda. Um, so who here has heard of ProBuilder? Cool, okay, that's good. Not all the hands went up, so someone's going to learn something today. That's good. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through the workflow of prototyping out, white boxing a level um, using ProBuilder. I'm going to take it into Maya, make some iterations to the mesh and export it out using our round tripping tool, digital content creation round tripping tool. Has anyone heard of that, our DCC export tool? Nobody. This is crazy. Every event I come to, no one's heard of this, and it's so cool, and it's free on the asset store, so you're all going to learn something today. And then finally, we're going to be looking at shader graph. So we're going to export that mesh back into Unity and then make it look pretty with some shaders. Has anyone had a chance to play with shader graph yet? Josh, you work for Unity. That doesn't count. Um, so just as an overview then. So ProBuilder is a 3D modeling uh, package so you can do 3D modeling in the Unity editor which is super cool and if you've used 3D software packages before like 3ds Max when when I show it you shortly there'll be a lot of um, operations that are familiar to you so it's used for white boxing levels that's what we're going to do today but a lot of games have been made just using Pro Builder so Super Heart and Manifold Garden um, so we can get started today on white boxing levels, but you can just go mad with it, really, when, when it's in your hands. And also, as it says there, I'm not going to do any of this today, but there's also capabilities for like texturing, uh, vertex painting, and that kind of stuff too. Then our round tripping tool. So we have a collaboration with Autodesk. And so what that means is we got to see all their super secret FBX exporter code. And so we've created a tool on the asset store that you can download, plug into Unity. There's a separate little plug in bit for Maya or Max. And it creates a live link from uh, your uh, 3D software package to Unity. So that when you iterate on a mesh, it shows in real time in Unity. So you're not having to keep switching between software packages, uh, which I think is super cool. And I'm always surprised when no one's heard of it. So I'm glad. I feel like I've done my job now. I can leave. And then finally, Shader Graph, which I'm super excited about. Um, I've been waiting for this for a while. I get to play with lots of tools at Unity, and this has been one of my favourites. So this morning, what I'm going to do is just start from the level, from like bare basic minimum. Just going to make a simple, like little uh, rim, rim light shader for interactable objects in our scene. So starting super basic, but then you can go away. I'm going to give you a link to a sample library, and you can go absolutely mad which is what we like. Package Manager. Has anyone heard of Package Manager or Pac-Man? Cool. So Package Manager is a way for you to be able to um, modularize Unity, so make it unique to you. So any Unity pa packages that you need, you can download them using Package Manager. And it just means the editor isn't all clogged up with things that you don't need. So Shader Graph and Pro Builder, you can download using Package Manager. And I'll show you how to access that too. If you've downloaded Unity 2018, it will be in there, so you can use it straight away. You might hear it referred to as Pac-Man quite often, but we obviously couldn't use that. So now if the agenda just looked like a jumble of images, it may look a bit clearer now. And let's jump into the editor. Who's been using Unity maybe since like Unity version 3? Cool. Did you, do you remember the sample project Angry Bots? This is Angry Bots 2. So our content team have been working on Angry Bots 2 and it's super fun. So I'll just play it. 
It's been created using our um, new scriptable render pipeline. So this is using the lightweight pipeline. And at the moment, Shader Graph, all the shaders that you create for it, um, they create shaders that can be used with the lightweight render pipeline. So everything that I show you today is applicable to the lightweight pipeline. The support for HD will be coming soon. Um, and so everything in this scene that you can see, so the, the sort of emissive lighting, this hologram effect, the spider bot, all the shaders are done using uh, the shader graph. And I'll show you how to get started and to apply those. But first things first, let's start with Pro Builder. So we have this lovely level here. And all of this has been prototyped and white boxed using Pro Builder. So let's say I want to add an extra area to this level. I want to keep it the same dimensions. I want the positioning to be bob on. So I can use Pro Builder to white box and extend this level out. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and pretend I'm an artist, because I'm not. Um, and also, it would take me longer than half an hour to white box out a level. So here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so, here we go. So, as I said, Pro Builder can be accessed using the Package Manager. So if you have 2018.1, you can now get the Package Manager UI. So it's Window, Package Manager. And what it does is it tells you um, all the packages that you have in your project at the moment, and then all of those that are available to you. So anything that you need, you can download, you can upgrade from here. And at the moment, this is just Unity packages, just what Unity have created. Um, and so you can download Pro Builder from here. Once you've done that, if you go to the Tools menu, you'll see this Polybrush, ProGrids, and Pro Builder. Originally, uh, Procore, that was um, Carl and Gabriel, the gentlemen's names, they made these three um, products and they were on the asset store. Now that they work for us and are doing super cool stuff, um, all these are free. So, uh, Pro Builder you can get from Package Manager, but Polybrush, which is like a 3D sculpting tool uh, and painting, and it's also got this cool little scatter brush where you can like scatter geometry. Um, and ProGrids, which I'm going to show you later, you can download from the, those from the Asset Store for free. But if you pop to Pro Builder and Pro Builder Window, it opens up like this. So I'm just going to dock it. You can have icon or text mode, whichever you prefer to, which I, which I didn't know for ages. And I was just struggling with the pictures, like what, does, what do these things do? Um, so I've got this level here. Let's say I want to create a slope for our character to walk up. So simplest thing I can do is just add some standard geometry. So I can go to new shape and create a cube. There's also stairs in here, which a lot of uh, like 3D artists get excited about. Um, archways, and I don't, that sounds like a dinosaur. I don't actually know what shape that is. But I can just build that cube. And then I can just place it in the scene using the gizmos that you're, that you're used to moving any kind of game object with Unity. At the moment, I have the uh, shape, the whole object selected. So there's this toolbar at the top that's kind of got this cube for the whole object. There's vertex, edge, and faces. So, like, yeah, if you've used any 3D software packages before, it's all kind of familiar. I'm just going to roughly place this down here. That will do, I think. So now I've just kind of roughly placed it where I'd like a ramp to be. I can go to the uh, face view, and I can just drag to extrude that out. And again, like this. Boop. Super simple. No drama. And then just switch to the edge view and start manipulating that around. And then, like I said, if you've used 3D software packages before, you like 3ds Max, you may see things that are quite familiar, like being able to sort of collapse vertices so you've got no hidden geometry. You can do that too. So as you sort of flick between each of the modes, it will change the hierarchy of the commands that you have. So I can just like collapse those vertices. Super simple. Oh no. Yeah, no drama. 
So I know it's not very exciting. I'm kind of just making a ramp, but you can see how easy it is to just throw in a standard shape and just manipulate that. There's also a, f a command called ProBuilderize. So you can actually just put in a normal game object and ch change it into a Pro Builder mesh and have all this functionality too. So it's pretty sweet. And then, like I mentioned, ProGrids. So again, this is under the tools. Uh, you can download this from the asset store for free. Open the ProGrids window. And now you can pop on um, grids that allow you to snap um, any of the edges or vertices that you're moving. You can change the increment of the snap to work to uh, sort of whatever worlds you're creating. Switch them on and off. One for X, Y, and Z, and that kind of thing. So this just means that now, if I want to move my stairs, they'll go in the snap increments that I've, that I've sort of set. And if I want to um, move this edge to snap to the side, you can see it kind of just snaps now. Oops. just makes it a little bit easier to be able to line things up. Because even if you're white boxing your levels, this like um, level of precision is super useful. So then another cool thing that we can do with um, Pro Builder, if you're wanting to not use standard geometry, because like you can see here, we have this cylinder that we've put in for a computer terminal. We have this conveyor belt. It's just really great for like communicating creative intent. Um, but if you want to create more complex meshes, you can use polyshape. So if I want to put a railing here, for example, so the player doesn't run off, I can select polyshape, and then you can just plot the vertices. I am the best artist in the world. And then just like kind of move that up. Best railing ever. <laughs> can you imagine going to your boss with that? Look what I made. And then you can also sort of manipulate these shapes after they've been created too. So super easy, quick, um, and good for iteration too. Um, what it does is it creates everything as kind of a new game object. So I'm just going to rename those and drag them into the level hierarchy because this is going to be integral when we go into our round tripping tool. So I've got a great fence and I have a ramp. Let's just drag those into this white box level. Okay, so our level looks beautiful. Um, okay, so that's super quick intro into Pro Builder. As you can see with all of the commands that are there, there's lots that you can do. Um, and um, there's some great videos. I've got the links at the end of the presentation of kind of getting started with white boxing a level, um, creating a simple level, into, um, <clears throat> inverting the normals so you can kind of, yeah, it's just great. I'll, I'll link you to them. It's good fun. So, sort of the second part of this then is setting it up to take into Maya. So, like I said, our export tool is available on the Asset Store and you can import it into your project totally for free. And this is what is used to create the live link between your 3D software package and Unity. So once imported, if you go to your uh, project settings, there's this extra um, uh, um, value in the drop-down list, which is this FBX export. Then you, can check, then you can select whether you want Maya or Max, and you can install the integration, and that will... Um, you can select to install that wherever your 3D software package is living on your computer, and then that gives you an extra sort of export import value for Unity that you can use. I'll show you that in a second. So to prepare our Unity mesh for this, our white box demo level that we've just created, I can now right click on it, and I can convert it to a linked prefab. If I do this, you have this little export window. I'm going to just convert that straight away. And what that does is, it's created in our project now. It creates a prefab, which is going to be what is live linked to Maya. And it also creates this FBX um, sort of copy version of it. So we've got the prefab and the uh, FBX model. 
So now if I go into Maya, and like I said, if I've um, installed the plugin, in the file menu, you'll now have this fancy Unity bit. So now we can import in the FBX that we've just created as a link prefab, which is here. And as you can see, it's got my amazing ramp and <laughs> fence in it. I've made better fences. Um, so now what we have is we've got everything in Unity that we need for our artists to be able to create uh, the levels with the final art to the correct, everything's in the correct position that we need and everything's also to the correct scale. And what I've also done is I've made sure in my settings and preferences that the units that I'm using are set to meters so that it, um, here we go, are set to meters so that because Pro Builder will build in Unity meters, so just making sure that they're in sync for when we add the final art in there. So as I said, I'm not an artist. So here is one I prepared earlier. There we go. So let's pretend that the Unity demo team who've made this art, because they're super clever, have gone in and they've married everything up. So we can see this sort of computer terminal that I have here. Um, they've added the final art there, the conveyor belts, and then in this circular area that I put the fence around, we've got this robot arm in there. So then to be able to sort of let Unity know what objects need to be live linked back, you can see that there's something called this Unity um, FBF, FBX export set. So once all the finished art has been done and married up in the correct position, we can just simply drag this into the FBX export set. And then this is what can be used then to, uh, again with this Unity uh, drop down, to export it back into Unity. So again, you can just be iterating, and when you finish your iterations, press export, back to Unity. And it just means there's less toing and froing which is feedback that we got from the community that they, they were like, we just want to be in Unity as much as possible. So that's what we're trying to do there. In the interest of time, and I have got the finished art in here. So, so everything that was in there, we have the computer terminals, we have the arm, we have a much better looking fence and this ramp. And then we also have these sort of miscellaneous level props in there too. So as I mentioned, everything in here, well, the majority of things in here are using shader graph, but there's a lot in here that's kind of using the, the light, um, the render pipeline, sort of standard shader. So with the new pipeline, so scriptable render pipeline, lightweight and HD, the Unity standard shaders, uh, we've, the new pipelines have got their own. So if you find that you have an existing Unity project and you want to sort of upgrade it to use the new render pipeline, you'll see that a lot of your objects are kind of magenta. But you, there is actually a handy drop down that you can just convert all your um, shaders to the uh, lightweight version. All of the lightweights have their like standard PBR shaders and unlit shaders as you'd expect. But you can also see that there's this new drop down which is graphs. And so every shader graph shader that you create will be in this uh, drop down here for graphs. So there is a fancy door in here. So does anyone remember the like first Devil May Cry when you were stuck in a boss room and the skulls used to come up on the door? No, is that just me? Um, <laughs> I used to love it, I used to be like, right. So we, we, we kind of tried to recreate that here. Um, so this uh, shader on the door. So you can see here that the shader is under the graphs drop down. It's this locked door shader graph here. And if I open this up, because we can edit the shaders by uh, right clicking on the little cog and going to edit shader, and it opens up the shader graph, which on first glance can look a little bit daunting and that's why I'm going to take us straight back to basics with it. There's sort of lots of nodes going on and it's a little bit intimidating. Um, but just a few things that I will point out in this large graph 
is that there's this masternode in every single uh, shader graph um, that you create. And the masternode is the final point of the shader. All these nodes that are coming to create this final node, all these sort of branches, the final final that you'll see on your objects in the scene view is being presented in this master node. And if you're used to using standard Unity shaders, you'll be familiar with all these node values here, like the albedo, the metallic, and the smoothness, and all that kind of thing. Um, and the cool thing about shader graph is that you get this instant visual feedback here. So we have these nodes at the bottom that are creating this scrolling uh, UV of this image to create like this ripple effect. And we can just uh, delete that, for example. And you'll see that now in the master node, it sort of gets rid of that, pre that, that is no longer in the final preview. So everything culminates towards this master node and you get that instant feedback, which is really useful. And if you've got a specific piece of geometry that you wanna test this shader out on, there's this preview window at the bottom and you can, also create a, you can also add a custom mesh to be able to preview that. So I'm going to close this one and just start basics. So like I said, just gonna make a simple rim light shader for like, inter, it like destructible objects in our scene, like these barrels, for example. Um, so if I select this barrel in the scene at the moment, it's using the standard shader for the lightweight render pipeline. So if I go to Package Manager and download Shader Graph, I can then go to my project window and in the Create menu, under Shaders, I can create a PBR graph. We can create subgraphs too, so uh, Shader Graphs can also use other graphs. Um, people at the moment are kind of using this for grouping because at the moment in Shader Graph we're still working on it. There's no ways to create like, like groups to like have a visual representation. And then also unlit shaders on there too. So I'm gonna go with a PBR graph today and call it uh, Rimlight Shader Graph. And then from the project window, I can just double click to open it. So here's this master node and the preview window. So as I said, Everything that you'd be used to with the standard shader, like the albedo and the emissive. Um, a lot of people in the team like to work with um, the window full like this, but I'm gonna show you how you can dock it and see the live link straight away. So really quickly, let's create a node. Right click to create a node. There's lots of different values to be able to create. There's artistics, input, there's maths, you can use booleans to flick effects on and off, um, textures. So I'm just gonna use a Fresnel effect, Fresnel effect, and I'm just gonna plug that into the emission. And you can see it updates straight away. I can play with the power. Um, and then let's say I want some color. I've just realized I'm banging on and the time is, uh, so let's speed this up. And let's say I want the emission to be a nice blue. I can plug that into the albedo for now. And again, see that update. If I save the asset then, the way that I apply this to my object is with that graph dropdown. So if I select back on the barrel, go to graphs and select my, uh, 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 Rim light shader. This is what we've got at the moment. It looks beautiful, Byron. I don't know why you're laughing. This is a masterpiece. <laughs> so, what can we do to make this better? Lots of things. Um, so, I'm going to add a texture. So, we can add all the textures that you'd be used to um, as well. So, I can add the albedo here just by um, getting the diffuse map for the large barrel. And I can plug this into oops, the albedo instead. And then what I can do here to get this rim effect to highlight blue around the object is I can actually create a multiply node. 
and it multiplies the effect of uh, two uh, node logics together. For the programmers in here, you can also extend the nodes. So you can, for example, um, I was like, I want to multiply like five things together. And someone on the content team made me this node straight away so I could plug five things in. Um, there's a blog post on that that I can share as well, which I thought was super useful. So with the multiply node, I can uh, plug the channel into one, and I can plug the Fresnel effect into the other, and then plug that into the emission. It updates, you see it in the master node, and then I can save the asset, and it updates straight away in the uh, scene view, which is super useful. The last thing I'll do, which I thought was pretty cool, was you can also um, do, thing, do effects over time. So I can plug this time node into the power, um, and then that will create like this flashing effect over time, which is pretty cool. There's also a clamp node that you can add so that you can clamp the values so it doesn't, so it doesn't go too crazy and flash too bright. Um, there's super lots of good fun that you can have with the shader graph. In the example library that I'm going to link you to, um, there's like hologram shaders in there, fire, lava, ghost. Um, it's, it's really good fun. One of our evangelists, Andy Touch, made it. So that's wrapping it all up. Um, so just an overview, super quick. Pro Builder uh, from Pack Manager, the round tripping tool from the Asset Store, Shader Graph from Pack Manager, all free. Uh, go forth and have fun. Um, the extra links. So Pro Builder, all the videos to get started, you can pop to ProCore.com. We also have lots of videos on our Unity YouTube channel. ShaderGraph, this GitHub repository here, um, it has like 15 ShaderGraph examples on there that you can download and play with, and he's adding more and more when he finds fancy things. And you can also follow Andy Touch on Twitter because he's always tweeting random shader stuff. Um, and then, furthermore, don't forget about our Learn channel, lots of great free content on there. And we also now have workshops, so you can actually come to the Brighton office and be taught by one of us, which is good fun. Um, so, yes, yeah, sorry for running over slightly. Thank you for listening to me, Babylon, um, and feel free to reach out to me, and I hope that you learned something today. Thank you very much, Liz.